Today I'm going to 3D print a Lego TIE Fighter. When I was a little kid, I absolutely loved playing with Legos. I honestly would sit in my basement for hours and hours and hours, never coming out, just sitting there, digging through a giant bin of Legos, trying to create like whatever it was I was trying to create. And so anyways, I found this catalog uh, from 1997, this is the 1997 Shop at Home Lego catalog. And I was just looking through it and I remembered some of the, some of these kits that um, Lego used to make that were just so cool, especially when you're like, I don't know, a 10 year old kid. Um, hey look, there's there's a phone number at the bottom here. It says um, if it, it says it's open 24 hours a day. I wonder if it still works. Thanks for calling Lego customer service. For English, press one. Para servicio en español, oprima el dos. But anyways, check out some of these. Check out this space shuttle, dude. That's so sick. But there was one that I loved. There was one particular kit, and it is this bad boy. This car was like my favorite thing that I have ever seen in the Legos. And I thought maybe I would 3D print this as a project. It would be a lot of fun. And then I realized 1,300 pieces. <laughs> Um, shock absorbers, the trunk opens, this, the wheel steer. This is a lot more complicated project than I think I can tackle because I've never 3D printed a Lego before. Fortunately, maybe while we prepare to do something like this, the company that makes these has decided that kids don't have money it is their millennial adult parents that have money. Well, actually, they don't have any money. They just have enough money to spend on stupid things that make them feel good inside. So they've started putting out these really awesome Star Wars kits. And I found this one online. And here is the parts list. So I decided I was going to build that one to prepare. Now, if I get 10,000 likes, if I get 10,000 likes on this video, I will make that Millennium Falcon kit that everybody obsesses over. Um, I will do it, but that 10,000 is a lot for me. That is not going to happen. So, I mean, I mean, it could happen if everybody hit that like button and made sure to subscribe. So off I went trying to figure out how to 3D print Legos. Like, is there a place where I can go to get the files? And yes, it turns out there is a place that you can go and you can just 3D print the files. All right, so the two websites that I used to complete this kit was first of all, Brickset. Brickset has uh, images of all the stuff. It also has the parts list down here. So here's the parts list. And then it also has the instructions. So it has a PDF of the instructions, which is important once you get into the more complicated Lego kits, obviously uh, you need to know how they go together. So uh, parts, instructions, that's half the battle right there. Basically what I did was I looked at this part, like this plate is a four by 12 and the number is a 3029. So I went to printablebricks.com and I typed in a 3029 and here we go. There it is right here and um, you can just download it. And it turns out that they are an exact fit for real Lego. So these are exactly to scale and 
um, my printer has a tight enough tolerance that it actually will connect to normal Lego. This opens up definitely the possibilities for somebody who maybe needs a piece for a kit that's old, or maybe they want to do custom pieces. You could totally remix a lot of these files. And that's really what they're intended for, is to be remixed. They're not necessarily um, intended to do what I'm doing, which is a little nuts. It wasn't all smooth sailing though. So as you can see on this print, something went horribly wrong. And this was quite a conundrum, but I figured it out. Now, as you can see here in Cheetube Box, there are some dark blue areas. And those dark blue areas mean that will not print. That geometry is inverted usually, which uh, the 3D software doesn't know what to do with this inverted geometry. It's like trying to print inside out or something. So it just ends up not printing that. And there's an easy way to fix these files. And that's using Microsoft 3D Builder. Just import the file into 3D Builder, click the repair button and save it. And now when you open up the file, everything is fixed. It is facing the right way out and you can make great 3D prints from that now. There we go. So I 3D printed, it took about seven full build plates of putting the bricks just like this. I put them all uh, tightly packed together so they come out in a big sheet. And you can see the orientation that I had these bricks. That seemed to work out pretty good for me. Having the, the skinny ones on their sides like that and then the flat ones, I just printed basically the way that they uh, showed up, just flat on the ground. That seemed to work really well. I also printed some of these prints in like a clear resin. Uh, there were a few things that were, um, you know, supposed to be clear or transparent. So I just used a clear resin. I think maybe the next time I do this, I might make the different colors. So this original print was supposed to have uh, black and blue, and that is totally possible to do with resin dye. You can dye the resin the color that you need, and you could print the exact colors that the kit demands as well. But other than that, it was just a bunch of cleaning up. Some of these I had to, you know, give a little bit of sandpaper to, to just to make sure that the edges were nice and clean. All right, there were a couple of pieces that there just was not a 3D file for. And what was weird is some of the pieces I thought I definitely wouldn't be able to find a 3D file for, there was a 3D file for, and then some of the pieces, like the one I am making right now, I just could not find. I needed this dome and I needed to have a single uh, point on the top for that. And then I also needed to make another one that had like a single point and a cone. So I just did some really simple modeling in Tinkercad and I just used some of the, the pieces and I, I just reshaped them and you know, made them, made them the shape that I needed them to be. This was uh, rather simple and it seemed to work out okay. And the prints turned out great of these. And then finally, I had all the pieces. <laughs> now, the assembly can begin. <laughs> Everything was going just great until disaster hit. Well, it got really warm out all of a sudden 
and all of the flat pieces warped like crazy. Well, it turns out that the solution to warping is to use a heat gun and heat them up, get the resin nice and soft, and then you can put it into whatever shape you want. I found once it was connected, it stayed connected and stayed relatively in shape. Well, this project was a whole lot of fun to uh, find a kit to 3d print it all um, but it definitely is not as great as normal lego is it is um, although like i said this will connect straight to real lego um, like getting things to fit this is actually just kind of on there <laughs> right now um, and, uh, you know, I've had to super glue some stuff. I have to use a heat gun. It's kind of getting warped right now. Um, so it all isn't super peachy, but it did work. And I think that if I didn't have a design with like these large flat areas, I think it would work a lot better because honestly, the normal bricks fit really good, especially just with a little bit of heat, they will clamp together and then they'll stay put. It's these big, huge areas that are the problem. And, uh, you know, just with warpage, that's the deal with resin. I don't know if anybody knows a solution to this. Um, but anyways, this is a super fun project, something I didn't know I could do. And now I could definitely make my own custom Lego parts if I want to do a cool uh, design of my own that would be a lot of fun now if you were to try to 3d print lego what kit would you try let me know in the comments down below have a good one you guys